So clearly, at least somebody used to live here. Yeah. What, if anything, do we know about where the primordial lives? Primordial is west somewhere of where you are. The cloud trail kind of raises a little bit with where you guys are right now um, because the clouds are also moving the opposite direction. Um, and then lowers on the uh, western side again. Well, I'm sure they're very interesting people down there. I feel like we should continue. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Am I sure we they're interesting people? Sure. They're going to be the most boring fucking people. <laughs> um, they are, in fact, bore people. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Ah! <laughs> oh, I almost want to make that what they are. Um, so you are currently falling up towards this island. Uh-huh. Is kind of a thing. Okay. Oh, we're going full grand line uh, on this one. <laughs> gravity has reversed. You are heading towards an island that is floating in the sky above the um, above this above uh, what I, I'm above gonna hit the uh, actually no, where's I'll I'll yell for Ramus first. Get his ass on deck right now. Yes. Air capabilities. Ramus uh, runs up and just as you uh, say that, what the fuck? Gravity <laughs> reversed. Get us airborne now. He wa he runs over to the console and slams the emergency up button. That's what I was gonna do if he didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be the emergency down button in this case? It's the emergency stop falling upwards towards the uh, stop falling upwards. Button. I'm gonna put a big it's label very, that says panic specific. on that. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have press the digitation? Nope. So you can just press the digitate one on. Only as long as that lasts. And I don't have press digitation, so. Fair. Mm. Mm, do I have anything for this? Do I have anything for this? Alrighty. So, you are all now suspended midway between the pit of. Midway between the pit in the ocean, that w that is where this island was, you can see all the way down to the ocean floor where gravity has picked up um, the water and flown it into the sky to surround this island. Hmm. And the island itself that is floating in the sky. I was like going okay. over the side of the ship and looking between the two. Huh. All right. I think it's time to start going over how to move this thing in the air. And I guess it is. I guess it is.
Um, okay. You guys picked the. He- you guys rolled a hell of a fucking combination for this. Um, <laughs> we are just continuing the trend, apparently. Ah. All right, um, Digaroy. As Ramus begins to demonstrate how to uh, what some of the, or not demonstrate, but at least point out some of the uh, most important levers on the airship. Um. An enormous glob of water detaches from uh, the ocean below and starts sailing up towards the ship. Oh, do I have anything for this? Do I have anything for this? Does it look like it's going to hit us? Yup. Okay. 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 There are no sails, so I don't know how to do that. Um, I want him to turn on a pro- one of the propellers, and I guess swing the rudder to the side. Does the rudder do anything in the air? He kind of shrugs his shoulders a little bit, slams one lever forward all the way, and the, uh, oh, let's see. (laughs) He doesn't quite make it out of the way of the, uh, out of the way of the water. Um, he manages to, uh, Slamming the uh, one lever forward kind of made the ship just spin in a circle. Um, and the water hits the deck. And I need all of you to make strength saves for me, please. Fine. Oh! Christona, you... Sudoku and Diggeroy, you're or Sudoku and Bauer, you're fine. Diggeroy, you are also fine. Um, you get knocked back by the uh, you get knocked back by it, but you hit the railing of the ship and are fine. Um, Christona, I need you to make a deck save. Mm-hmm. Good enough. <laughs> uh, you managed to grab the railing. Um, and pull yourself back up to avoid falling uh, a while to the island below. To be fair, one person who can actually turn into a bird now, so... Oh. It's okay. Ramus looks a little confused at the uh, one lever and points and uh, pulls it back that the airship stops spinning in circles. Shouldn't be going that quickly. Oh. Oh. Oh, shit. Uh... He takes out a knife and um, pulls back one of the pauldrons on his armor and cuts the uh, top of his forearm and it heals almost instantly. Oh, shit. High positive (laughs) energy zone? Yeah. Growth zone. It's (sighs) gravity's been reversed, and it's a growth zone. He throws a middle finger towards uh, somewhere in the fog. Be very... Maybe it's best if I don't show you how to fly it in the air here. Better to learn another day. Yes. There's a wisdom to that, I think. Yeah, well, she's yeah. still hanging off the side, fly. basically. <laughs> why, don't, why don't you fly us out of here? Just tell me if you need me to do anything. You just watch. I am going to fly very carefully. Because Famous those last zones, words. Well, oh my gosh. Those zones, uh, 
amplify magic, and this whole ship is magical. Um, so if we're not careful, then it might rip the ship apart. Yeah, try not to do that. Yes. Please. Okay. Ramus flies very carefully to the edge of the, uh, to what looks like the edge of the gravity reversal. Okay. I'm going to take us out. Everybody hold grab a line. Something. Yep. Yep. Hold on to the side. Hold on to something. Because we're going to flip really fast. Or we'll die. He kind of shrugs. One of the two. Hmm. Yep. So, you head to the edge of the rever gravity reversal zone. Ramus throws a bunch of levers in quick succession. Um, and the ship begins to tilt towards um, to tilt towards the left, even as it crosses the line, um, and gravity abruptly reasserts itself, going the opposite direction again, but down, the same way it normally does. Ray. And you fall back down towards the sea. He manages to flip you um, just in time. And you manage a not graceful, but survivable landing into the ocean. A puff of spores from the mushroom top <laughs> as they hit the ground. He just closes his eyes. I hate this place. I hate this place. I hate this fucking place. I'm beginning to see why. Highly unnatural. We do not like it either. All the more reason to get in and get out quickly. Yeah. Yes. Or not to Go in at all. He throws another middle finger out towards, uh, out into the mists in this direction. Fuck you. Blinks at Remus. <laughs> Which just he shakes his head a little bit. Fuck that guy. I'm going to go below decks and check to see um, when we fell. If anything's broken, I'll let you know. Otherwise, let's keep sailing, I guess. Righto. I'm in the spot where the fog is least. Or any kind of opening in the fog. Yep. Start steering the ship to the... Uh path revealed by the fog. Assuming there still is one. There is indeed. You.
What was that island? Who are you asking? Ramus. <laughs> Ramus has gone below. Oh, are you, you are below? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Sorry. Um. So. Hey, Bauer. What's up? Roll me a d20. All of you roll me perception checks. Um. Damn. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was gonna Sorry. ask, Digger, I was gonna ask you to roll a navigation, or a navigation tools check as well, but, uh, Given your 29, I don't think it's quite necessary. You head off into the... Um, you head off into the fog once again, following the tunnel that's been laid out. You see a little bit more of the... come across another small set of islands that the tunnel leads you between um, and then takes a sharp turn. You eventually notice as you're coming through and around the fog um, that you come up to another set of two islands. They look identical to the set you passed just a few hours ago. Your path is leading you in circles. Hmm. Where do compasses point in this setting? Uh, the center. So theoretically, if oh. I just line up the compass and go straight, I should get that, right? Yes. Line up the compass to where? The center. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're trying to find Magnetic North, you just go where it points. Yep. I had a whole thing worked out for that, for how compasses worked at one point. Um, it's why the sun doesn't move. Um, hmm. But, uh, yeah, compasses all point to the center. Okay. And I'm guessing it's been pointing off to my left this whole time? Uh-huh. It sure has. It sure has. Explains that at all, Christina scrunches her nose. And bring us to a stop before we get too close to the islands. Is there anything on these islands? Um, they look to be almost natural paradises. Hmm. So they're filled with, they're bursting with plant life, um, forests. Right to the edge of the water, there is green, verdant life. 
covering these. The islands are practically bursting with uh, life. Digo Roy, let mm -hmm. us try and commune again here. I'd be very careful because I think there might be some kind of magic surge going on. I kind of want to cast a healing spell just to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Please cast magic in here. Please. We are not using magic here. If they get the go-ahead, gonna mm -hmm. jump off down to one of those like small islands. <laughs> Bow roll a D one hundred. Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> well, <laughs> you do the Hadoken pose and shout. Fireball! And a poof of flame actually comes out of your hands. Oh shit! Oh shit! Roll me a d10,000. Oh dear. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> well. Um. <laughs> All right. Power, you suddenly feel very... You suddenly feel like you're very stuffy all of a sudden. Um... <laughs> the fireball gave him a cold. No. Um, <laughs> next time you sneeze, it acts like a young red dragon's breath weapon. Oh, fuck. <laughs> This is a wooden ship. <laughs> Don't sneeze while you're on the ship. God damn. Or at least do so upward. Do I know this ahead of time? Probably not. Oh, well, well, fuck. All right. I'm glad I knew we were going to be on the sea and I got control of water. You are in the middle of the sea. Um, just don't don't sneeze. But Cristona, you wanted to hop onto the island and try and commune again. Yes. All right. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da. Make me a commune check. All right. So last time you tried to <laughs> tried to commune with the earth, you were just outside of the motherfucker. You were just outside. <laughs> where exactly is the just... motherfucker? We <laughs> where we were outside of a motherfucker last time too. <laughs> Um, you were just outside of the Ridge of Mountains, and you had the feeling that you were crossing over into, into Earth not ruled by the Earth, ruled by something else. Mm -hmm. Now you've stepped onto this island, and that feeling surrounds you, but it's within the island itself. Something else smaller, but still very powerful, has taken control. You've entered into something else's domain. Where you are right now. What are you trying to communicate with? Or what, like, are you trying to communicate? Sorry? Yeah, I'm trying to get a hold of the Primordial again, hopefully. <laughs> 
or figure out why we're going in circles if we're following the fog that we thought was from from the primordial. You get a loud and clear response. I am doing the best I can. The master of this place is fighting against me, Hell. Is there a way we can assist? Make it easier. Tell your navigator to head to the center and follow the mountains west along it. Do not enter the Ring of Mountains. Understood. Wait a moment, and then break the connection and start heading back to the ship. Nikoroi, we must head to the center, follow mountains west. Do not go to the circle. Hmm. So west of the mountains and follow them. South to the mountains and follow them. South to the mountains and then go west. Yes. Okay. All right. So, you want to have a lunch with a shit ton of pepper on it, Bauer? <laughs> no. Oh, God, come on. Come on. You telling me you don't want to deal 16 D6 fire damage with a sneak? Not to the ship. At least not while we still need it. Fair enough. All right. So. Mm -hmm. Need for you to roll D100s for me as you head south. Oops. So are each of us D100? Yeah. Da -da -da. Ooh. Ooh, boy. So you head south. Through the uh, south, through the fog, you've left behind the path carved out for you, and are now proceeding blindly through the fog. Digger, I need you to make me a navigation tools check. Um, just int plus proficiency. It's not a hard one. Um, I see if I have a proficiency there. Nature would be the same number. Yeah. 18. Cool, cool, cool. So you do just find navigating your way south. Um, and Bauer, roll me a D9. 
Oh boy. Ah. Well. Right, it's not a nine. Right, uh, make me a wisdom save. Okay. So, for the next hour, Bower, you are affected as per the spell slow. Oh no! Oh no! So everything around you slows down as you head south. Wait, does everything else slow down or does everything else speed up? You, yeah. sorry, you slow down. Everything else around you speeds up. Okay. Hmm. Um. Hey, Sadok, can you roll a d100 for me as well? Only two, actually. One for oh. you and one for your no. buddy who's riding along. No. Cool, 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 cool. Well. Diggeroy, nothing interesting happens to you. Um, you roll a 96, you escape the influence of uh, the master of this place. Um, <laughs> Christona, you hear some... Um, You hear some faint murmuring, but that's about it. Sudoku. Yep. In your head, you start to hear screaming. It does not stop. It does not end. So it I, uh, only gets worse and worse. Recognize the voice that's screaming? Nope. So, uh, does anybody else hear that? No one hears it too. Hear what? what? And you can hear him swearing in your head. Ah! Fucking hell. Never should have brought you back here, kid. Never should have come here. Uh, what is it? Um, that is my patron. Oh, oh. lovely. The God Hatius. All right, kid. Yeah. So no. yeah. Are you sure you want to do this? Uh, define uh, this. You are literally sailing straight towards where my patron is in prison. I mean, yeah, but we're just going to talk to somebody. Yeah, and apparently she set up shop right next to him. I'm not doubting your bravery or anything, but are you sure you're up for this?
Eh. We'll manage somehow. I don't suppose you have the psychic equivalent of earplugs anywhere inside there, do you? If I had, I would have used them centuries ago, kid. Sorry. I feel like he's having this conversation, like, in his head and kind of spacing out, and eventually, like, Christo is just kind of standing, like, staring at it right in the oh, face oh, too so close. Will be like, right out loud. <laughs> Every, everybody talking... can hear, like, a one-sided conversation. This just makes it even more curious. <laughs> Manage what? <laughs> Oh, I can hear Nolan's God screaming, apparently. Um, oh. Bauer, did we have any alcohol on board? That's a silly <laughs> question. Well, yes, I figured. Okay, let me show you to my new best friend. Sweet. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. As I slowly, slowly walk towards. I feel like he's speaking kind of like Christo now. Yes. <laughs> that Nolan, is I just give you rude. Psychic earplugs. <laughs> You're going to get drunk and call that psychic. Well, I mean, is he wrong? Yeah. Hopefully it lasts until you... Hopefully uh, we get out of here before you die from alcohol poisoning, kid. Oh, I'm a priest of tear. That'll take a while. Fair enough. Make me three con saves as you head below deck and begin to drink, I can only assume, direct from the... Uh, I mean, not like directly from the barrel. I, I mean, I have some class. I would grab a glass. Have some class, Glabba Grout. Gla Grat Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Not even drunk. You sure about that? Yeah, right? Very sure. That was this weekend. <laughs> it was a family reunion I had to. Well, obviously. Um. All right. It's so, Sudoku, really weird hearing all this in the demon voice. As you keep, Sudoku, as you keep uh, drinking and using the uh, enchantment on the barrel, magical energy crackles around you as uh, it reacts with the um, as it reacts with the magical energy in this place. Whenever you draw any weapon, your hair now stands completely straight up on end. Does All of your hair. Blonde? Sorry? Does it also become blonde? <laughs> Over 9,000! It does not become blonde. For the next A week... Point. For the next week, as long as you are wearing... Solely a red a costume of so blue. You are under the effects of the spider climb spell. Only if you are wearing a costume entirely of red and blue, though. <laughs> okay. Interesting. 
So become Harley Quinn. Or Spider Man. Or, you know, Spider Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> nope, Harley Quinn. It's weird. No, Quinn. But not All Miles Morales, Spider Man. <laughs> Do I realize that this is the case? Um, probably not. A really weird okay. table. It really is. <laughs> um, those two things. Roll an attack for me as well, as uh, your crossbow spontaneously discharges. Ooh. I swear this has never happened before. <laughs> oh. So your crossbow spontaneously discharges, hits you in the leg, deals a solid six damage as a little tendril of magic um, snakes from the barrel and into the uh, handle of your crossbow. We uh, had a long rest after fighting that big thing, right? You have a long rest, what? Yeah, yeah, you know, that was before we even went thing. to... Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, after the shit show that was last session, you guys got a long rest, I'm pretty sure. Well, I really hope that wasn't one of the bolts that was poisoned. How many bolts did you poison? I don't remember. Again, this is a little bit into the drinking. Drink That's it off. Uh, roll a d10. If you get a 10, then uh, it's a poisoned one. <laughs> it is not a poisoned one. Cutting it close. <laughs> <laughs> Just barely. Um, alrighty. Alrighty. So. Sadok, you're pretty drunk, but you're having a good time. And the screams are slowly but surely drowning out. Meanwhile, the rest of you... Whoops. Keep on heading south. You eventually hit a ring of mountains. Start heading to the west. And you eventually run aground. Or an island that comes directly out of the ring of mountains in the center. It is much the same as the last two islands that you came across. It is verdant and green. Um, and you can actually see um, a sun, see the sun overhead. If I, walk, if I carry the compass and walk back and forth across the desk, does it noticeably point in different directions or to the same nearby point? Um, oh, God, don't make me... <laughs> In other words, could I theoretically, if I didn't knew the math, calculate how close the center actually is? Oh. Um... How long is your ship across? Um, if it's ship size, it's going to be like 80 feet, which would be almost feet? 30 meters, 25 yeah. meters, somewhere in Something there. Something like that. Um, okay. I'm going to go with yes. Yes, you can determine the distance to the center from where you are. 
Is um, it within like a dozen kilometers? I was going to go Imperial. It's about 15 miles. All right. I'm going to therefore guess that this is the right island. Science, bitch. <laughs> Science! She blinded me with science. She located it with science. Um. All right. So. You step off. Are you going to land? Yes. All right. I'll hop off ahead of people, probably. So, you dock the ship. Hop off onto the island itself. As you do, excuse me, you immediately feel... I need a glass of water real quick. <laughs> you do sound like a demon. He does. It's been getting more pronounced all night, too. Right? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. You'll, you, can, you can hear it on the VOD afterwards. <laughs> sure. Um... Like, I'm sitting on the same couch I always do in front of the same fan I always do. Um, it happened last time, too, and then you left, and then you got back in, and then it was okay, but then that was before, like, the internet started going weird. Well, maybe the internet's just being a bitch. <laughs> As it does. I can try and make myself sound more happy and or angelic if that'll make okay. you feel more comfortable. <laughs> I'll just I'll send you a clip later. You know, I can always start talking louder and with my mouth more open. <laughs> it still sounds it just basically sounds like you're under the slow spell but you're not talking slower. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, yep. you step off onto the island, you immediately feel refreshed and revitalized um, as if you've basically as if you've ta as if you've uh, undergone the effects of a long rest just by stepping onto its shores. Everything around you is energetic and vibrant. Um, the sun is shining brightly overhead. So it's beginning to transition to more of a setting stage. Um, there is a lovely temperate forest ahead of you that is almost, that is actually literally buzzing with life. You can hear buzzing from within it. Um, Cicadas. And Bees, flies, mosquitoes. Yep. Um, Stone's checking out all the flora. Yeah. Checking out all the flora. Um, yeah. As you step into the, uh, as you step into a perfect little temperate forest biome. Ramus remains on the ship and waves down after you. Bye! I'm staying here. Don't leave. I won't. The asshole's watching me. And he points Who's towards the center. He points uh, directly towards the center. As I 
try and commune one more time and find the right direction through this forest. As soon as you set foot, you instinctively know, all of you, in fact, instinctively know where the primordial is. Oh, even better. You've oh. entered the heart of her domain. Ramus shouts, it's down to you as well. Say hi to Prim for... Canner had a moment and then give a slight nod at that and then turn to start following the path. All right. Uh huh. All right. So you walk through this perfect little temperate forest and biome. You see as you wander through, um, little groups of deer bounding through the forest. You see a pack of wolves at one point hunting one down. You pass by a river in which a bear is standing there um, hoping to catch salmon. You at one point walk upon a path directly through um, a patch of lovely trillium flowers in bloom. under the uh, blooming leaves of the local maple trees. You eventually come, after a few hours of walking and hiking through the hills and mountains of this place, with the sun setting before you, you come to a single tree in the middle of a grassland, beneath which an old elven woman in a simple brown robe, sits, meditating. She carries a, she has a simple wooden staff laying next to her, and bears no adornment whatsoever. As you approach, you have, you don't see her look towards you or acknowledge you at all but you have the sense that she is immediately aware of you and has been aware of you ever since you stepped on this island gonna just immediately kind of like upon seeing her do i guess what would be considered a kind of druidic formal greeting or like greeting towards one of high rank stars. It's, I mean, it's in Druidic, but it's basically uh, translates to hello, honored one mm -hmm. in Druidic. And she replies back in, in uh, she'll reply back in undercommon, actually. Hello to you as well. Without turning or opening her eyes at all. Impressed by the undercommon, but after a moment kind of figures if she's been around this long, probably knows a lot of languages, so. Oh, yeah. Hello to you all. Come. She motions to the uh, grass before her. Sit. Feel the sun. Listen.
I go over across the room and sit down and close the eyes a bit. That's a little bit, uh, not, not entirely like sun averse because drow, but just slightly. I'll, I'll also take a seat nearby. It's good sunlight here. Without his damn clouds covering everything. Very nice. Took me two centuries to get the fucking clouds to go away. Worth the effort, though. I spend every evening here absorbing the sunlight and feeling the domain of of my own will stretch out before me. It's beautiful. but small in comparison to small. In comparison to? This kind of makes a very broad gesture outward towards the rest of the, I think like the rest of the world. <laughs> Peaceful Bro. in comparison. only peaceful here now. This place is my home. My... What would Skull call it? <laughs> my Helgi Domo. My sanctuary. But it's also my fortress. My encampment. My place to fight. My place to watch. You know why... We are here. You want answers, I assume. I gave up on trying to guess why people came to me centuries ago. Centuries? Nine, ten, eleven centuries. Answers, thoughts, <clears throat> the problems Problem. with the Tula. Hmm. And you want my... <laughs> Who'd you learn it from? What's... The, as you so put it, problems with Atula? Who told you about them?
trying to who was the first person damn let me I'm trying to remember which was what was the first time it wasn't Was that from the situation with Tear? That was during the so. trial? I think so, yeah. Mm. So, you know, your first indication that something was wrong came from no <laughs> Yeah. Glint, oh, um, I don't know. Is it just. Is it just Cristona and Diggeroy here? Did anyone else come? I don't know. Did Bauer and Sado come along? We're probably here, but drunk. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Cristona just slowly turns towards Sado. <laughs> They're both here I assume and not here. that uh, <laughs> I assume that when told to sit, you probably sat. Either that, <laughs> or you started drunkenly telling the primordial, "Don't tell me what to do." <laughs> I, I have a feeling they sat, but the word "sit" implies a lot more grace than what actually happened. Yeah. Yes. Plopped. It was more like it. <laughs> yeah. Probably. That sounds right. Primordial seems pretty chill. She's probably used to it. Oh yeah, she brews some crazy fucking shit here. <laughs> she gets wasted on her own private, uh, private island. She has her. She, she, she gets, has what the pirate fire festival should have been. <laughs> she gets, as the kids say, hashtag lit. Crunk. Uh, None of the kids say crunk anymore when <laughs> you're showing your age. <laughs> Don't give a damn. <laughs> um, Bring it back like dope. <laughs> right? Oh, God. Oh, all right. Hmm. He was looking towards Sudoka. Anima of Earth Dreamer first. Then. What was it? Oh. <laughs> well, so you're the one who uh, freed the Earth Dreamer from his prison, huh? She looks towards Sadok. That, uh. makes it sound a lot more premeditated than it was. Yes. I remember. Damn foolish thing you did. Can't believe you actually listened and put him inside you. Wait, this is out of character. This is the person you told me to do that, right? Uh huh. But you <laughs> told me to! <laughs> I told you you could. I didn't expect you to actually do it. The Doak is full of surprises we have found. Yes, he certainly seems like it. I can feel the knives you have, have here. We learned first from the anima, but Atula proved it to us. I once called myself to you. I assume you took it as I am the warden of Nolan Earth Dream's soul. 
or what's left of it. That is not the prison I am most responsible for, though. Give side glance towards the center. She notices your glance and opens her eyes and nods. I monitor him. Make sure nobody can reach him to the best of my ability. Make sure nobody interferes. I try to to create harmony. between him and Atula and Gimir. It is not something that is going to work for much longer in the grander scheme of things. No. Not unless I can do better, but you wandered through my island for a couple of hours today. What did you see, young druid? Life, sun. Precisely. Life. Balance. A cycle. But a balanced one. Something in which all creatures both partake and give to equally. Where druids come in is to ensure that cycle continues naturally. Amongst our gods, there is an imbalance in that cycle. They fight amongst themselves. Hacious cast to earth and imprisoned. Two and Gamir fight over what remains, bound to this world, but hating it at the same time. As druids, we're bound to correct that, to fix the cycle. What better druid to take it on than me? Would would it be possible to remove Atula and Gamir from the cycle without destroying everything? Unbind them, really. She considers that for a moment. Mm. <sighs> yes, but it's not quite as simple as that. Atula and Gamir could be freed. To do so would mean that Eualia would be destroyed. It 
It is their energy directed by Hatius's will that forms Eualia and keeps it together, maintains the protective enchantments that protect it from the planes it crosses and the stars we see. Without something to replace them, our world is doomed regardless. Well, it seems, and correct me if I'm wrong, that if no change is made, Atula or Gamir will eventually succeed in destroying Eualia anyway. Assuming they continue to fight. Yes. That is my... That is how I choose to move forward. Is attempting to end the fight between them and Hatius. Between all three of them. Have you spoken to any of them or their avatars? Yes. They are changing. It is difficult to know whether it will be enough. Changing. We heard only anger and indifference from those of Atula's will. Not even a pause. She has, she has been changing. She's angry because she knows she's been backed into a corner. She's trying to lash out and change that. Gamir is as well, as best as I can tell. Keeps empowering mortals to do his dirty work for him. So both their change is away from the harmony you have been attempting to form. <sighs> she closes her eyes again. Yes. They are... I strove to impose on them that... That they could die. That an eternal existence could come to an end in them. And it worked. They realized the danger inherent. I just... <sighs> underestimated, uh... <sighs> underestimated how little they cared about the people they'd brought here. If we can hold together the world for a century or two more, I think 
He'll come around. I think after so many centuries and them moving away from your thoughts, two more will fix it. Maybe. Or perhaps it won't. Perhaps we'll need something different. If only I'd called a young group of adventurers to meet with me, that they might find something different. She looks at the four of you. She gives a little bit of an unimpressed look at uh, Sudok and Bauer kind of drunk off to the side. Uh, and then scans the other two of you with approval. <laughs> Even if you can't. My old fellows labor toward their own solutions. Whatever they may be nowadays. Perhaps th the problem lies in too many solutions with too few in agreement on the choices. Pulling the gods in many directions means none can fully take hold. It is a, just pauses, thinks for a moment, tug of war of ideas, which is why we are trying to find consensus from many. And that her, uh, the primordial's eyebrows furo. She looks over to you with her eyes fully open. She's finally uh, dropped her tranquil expression for what could best be described as a scowl. You wish to find consensus? You can try and get those other fuckers to agree to something. I tried. Five hundred years. I spent trying to get them to fucking agree. Sending primordial councils. Meeting up with old friends. None of them agree. So I came here. Just doing my best to make sure everything holds together. Hopefully long enough for them to figure out whatever they have to do. Our apologies if this sounds crass, primordial, but... A small group, even powerful as they are, are not the majority of this world, and consensus does not have to be just among them to be powerful. True. But we're the only ones who live long enough to see the damn th plan through. Skull's immortal. Duck is too. 
I'm the next best thing. Ramus is well. Ramus is trapped wherever he is. Nolan's found his own horrible immortality. Goldie's dead. Did you say Ramus was trapped? Yeah. yeah. She did. No, he's not. Not anymore. What do you mean, not anymore? Ramus, he's he's back on the boat. He is under oh, hell. his eye. Ours, in a Look, sense. Nolan said it was a good idea. More or less. I, I believe his exact words kind of... were, we could use some catastrophic stupid of our own. <sighs> the primordial closes her eyes tight and just kind of rubs her temples with her fingers. <sighs> you let Nolan tell you that releasing Ramus was a good idea. I mean, that's after, not why we did it, but... After all the effort we put into putting him in prison in the first place. He was granted parole. Again, this is not meant to offend, but point, uh, Chris Dunham eventually points towards the primordial, then over to Sadok, and then back towards the boat. There are three aiding us. Well, two, unless you would also, in finding this consensus, that perhaps is more than there was before. Sorry, what is Christona trying to say? Basically saying that like they were all in their separate directions before, but now at least like Nolan and Remus are kind of with them, or at least helping them out. And if the primordial helps out, that's three of however many there were, six, seven. Six. One of them's six. dead. Right. One of them's dead. One of them's the actual Nolan. Um mm. I have been helping since Cataclysm. I've been ensuring he doesn't break out and preventing a Tulan Gamir from ripping the damn continent apart. We are not trying to claim your efforts are I, not important. I... You came wishing for a solution. Each of us had our own. Mine was harmony. I wanted them, the gods, to find harmony again. They never had it from the beginning, if the story of this world is true. They had enough to not rip it apart between them. That is not true, Harmony. It was enough. Enough that the cycle could continue. Enough that people could live peacefully upon the surface without being threatened by 
terrors from beneath the earth, or... Speaking of terrors beneath the earth, if you ever go by Aventine, tell the Chancellor there that the Primordial tell says to be on guard. Or... Well... Or horrifying demons turning reality into a mess. Or the sea swallowing whole cities like it did to scale them. The gods may not have loved them or loved them all, but they kept them safe and kept them out of whatever squabbles they had amongst themselves. I do not strive for an ideal world, Cristona. I merely strive for one in balance. Simply are not sure how to make gods care again. We were not the present for when they did to be able to know why. If you wish to care for, to make her care again, speak to her yourself. Speak to them all yourself, if you really wish. If you wish to speak with a Tula, head beneath the ground. Find the drow. Speak to them. If you wish to speak with Gamir, head into the Northern Ocean. Find the Tritons. Or find one of those poor bastards he's empowered through the years. Make him understand that That the sea isn't his plaything. And if you wish, truly wish to try and settle things with Hatius, well. She waves a hand. And you can hear from over the hills where the sun sits the screams that Sadok and uh, Nolan were hearing in their heads. You can follow the screaming. He's just over the hills. trying to consider what else we could say we spoke at least to avatars of Atula's anger before and felt the disregard the Mm. Zephar said that strength is 
best for her. But we do not believe we are at a point where we can fight the gods themselves yet, though we have pushed back Atula's anger on occasions. However, if there is, if the idea is to make her respect the life she brought again, we are unsure if fighting is the answer for that. But we know no other knowledge of how to make her listen. The champions of Gamir only take if they're who he's sending out, he doesn't care about he may not want to destroy the world but he doesn't care about the people in it. You would need to make him She gets or a raised eyebrow at that. <laughs> or otherwise, if you wish to see Harmony, you'd need to make him. Or at least make him agree to stop using them as a damned pawn. I've never seen anyone forced into empathy. You can force obedience if you're stronger, but... I think if that was possible, someone would have done it a while ago. Hmm. Probably. If we cannot do that, then how would we gather the power needed to keep the cycle without needing them. <sighs> you could always release Hatius. She says in a semi-joking way. I'm sure that will release some power and definitely won't go poorly for everyone. Other than that, perhaps another god. <laughs> Bauer. You sneeze while you're drunk. Oh, shit. <laughs> Roll 16 D6. And a D8 for direction. Damn it. Huh. What was in these drinks, Bauer? You sneeze and send out... I don't think it's the cone. A 30-foot cone of fire. Uh, thankfully, you send it away from the primordial and your friends. She kind of looks at you and sighs, mutters a few words in, dru in druidic, and just drops a uh, ball of water on the uh, flames that you've put out on the flames. <sighs> More of Hatius' bullshit, I suppose. Um, you could always gather another god. To do that, you'd have to... Well... You'd have to head into the core of the world and dismantle some of the protections that are laid down there. 
that prevent outside influence of deities on Walia. Or... Hold on. If those protections were removed, since you're the one most likely to know this, would that reply to any god who wants to come in? Any god. Uh -huh. Both good and evil, yes. Noted. What if we, like, prearranged things with a specific god? Can we, like, take them down, let the god come in, and then put them back up? You could attempt to change them to specifically allow for a certain god. Should he agree, he or she... There's a moment Christina looks over to Sadok as if like pondering whether yeah, he has an idea for that. that point. <laughs> I mean, my idea doesn't really go much further than ask Tyr if he uh, has He's a buddy who wants to come to Eualia. Or himself. <laughs> Can you put out like a flyer for like good gods in search of worlds to over to to rule over? Yeah, like, hey, you Post got on that's God's for list. A roommate? God's list. Because <laughs> the, the, the job wrecks for that are going to be weird. Um, but I mean, if if that's our potential solution is find a new god, then secondhand world in need of God. I feel like going to the the god that we, or at least I, actually trust rather than a rando is probably preferred. Yeah, I feel like Rando is likely to go badly. Yeah. We've all at least kind of talked with Tyr a little bit, so that's a start. With Tyr, we know what we're getting. Yeah. For the most part. I mean, he's a lawful god. They're predictable. Mm. Yeah. There is... One other option. Expect the primordial. <laughs> Should you find your way to Helgidor, speak with. He calls himself Primarch now. His name is Skull. Last we spoke, uh, a thousand years ago? His plan was he had an idea for providing an alternate way to stabilize Yualio. He and Duck both, I suppose. There's always the option of going to search them out, but how do we uh, spell the mm, the Primarch's real name? Aha. Uh -huh. You can always attempt to find any of them, really. But consider that it's been a very long time. 
We're old people. We've had a very long time to fix things. And, well, she gives a little self-deprecating smile. In some cases, we've only made them worse. Think carefully before using any ideas we've come up with. We understand that it is partly why we have come to learn what has been done what the ideas are and were to lead to this point, at least then, a choice has more thought behind it. And as we said, perhaps there can be more consensus in the final outcome if we can make it. At least more than there has been. commendable knowledge of the past, but we are nothing Sometimes. if not combined knowledge from the past. <laughs> Sometimes the problems of today require solutions of today. <laughs> not solutions from the fossils of We do not seek solutions from the past, only the knowledge of what those solutions have created now, what to do, what not to do. We are not looking to repeat history. That will lead us back here. Yes. Here. Watching the sun set. Only this time it will be on the entire world. That is what we are going to stop. It looks like Nero's eyes a little bit and looks way more focused. We are glad to speak to you. Likewise. We hope the rest of the world can see this sun soon. As do I.
I hope they keep seeing it for millennia to come. That is a good cycle. She just grins in agreement. I eventually start to stand up and give the greeting again, or the sort of like thank you equivalent. More or less translates to uh, thank you, honored one. And she replies back. Thank you, honored one. Turn to the others and see how drunk the other the two still are and see if they can stand up. Stand up, Fodor. As you both stand up, she'll nod and just close her eyes again. Now return to meditation. How drunk are Sado Bauer right now? <laughs> mm, not wasted, but buzzed. Enough to drown out the screaming. Fair enough. Um, Nolan whispers in your head, Sadok. Hey, Sadok. Mm -hmm. Say this to her. See ya, Prim. Why? Just do it. I promise you, it'll be funny. She'll know. Yeah, what the fuck? See ya, Prim. <laughs> she immediately stands and whips her staff towards you <laughs> and points down at you, eyes narrowed. Cringe slightly. My name. <laughs> I am not Prim. You can hear Nolan chuckling away in your head. <laughs> I abandoned my name when I took the title Primordial. Nolan should know that. Down to size. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that he cares. Possibly a bad time to say that. Ramus also said hello, but we will not repeat the exact words. I'm like glancing down at the grass. <laughs> oh, rip, David. 
Oh no! Fuck! <laughs> well, take a slight break then. I can put up my break thing. Break time! And I'm gonna uh, break time inflict wounds. Uh, oh, okay. Oh. Uh, actually, I'm gonna do inflict whoops. Picture of the camera man uh, on fire. Inflict whoops. Yeah. <laughs> inflict whoops. Inflict whoops. Um, As if I so... made a terrible mistake. <laughs> With that confirmation, especially, she'll just look at Elias and say, I do believe Weir is correct. I believe that your goddess is protecting this graveyard. That might explain why well, she's Elias doing a shit job of it, isn't she? Bell's got more yeah. powerful. I mean, hey, she just deals with and the aberrations are way yeah. yes, I that that stuff, whatever that was, that is we won't that have to worry about undead up, here, I, I have to imagine. Is the term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Kurtonis, yeah. <laughs> Shit is up. The T Rexes are now turtles. All the way down? Yes. I'll be mean to this turtle right here. Okay. Uh, you do know what happens when you. Oh! <laughs> you gonna flip over the turtle? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's just mean. That's so mean. They attacked us. That's on them. I mean, it was coming right for Diggeroy. What else right. do you expect me to do? <laughs> you saved my life, man. I'll never forget this. <laughs> you know, was did she tell you how like if you find this elf, how do you know it's the right one? There's a lot of dead, sad elves in this wood. <laughs> like... <laughs> Leah, make a history check. Kurtaz cringes again. Yeah. Le Leah, history check for sad elf okay. knowledge. Uh, <laughs> be fun. Be fun. Hey, if you remember that any stories... We were carrying a sad elf at one point. It was a bag. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Um, like, I don't think you're happy when you become a bag. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want Cortanas to say that. Just because that's hilarious. <laughs> Although most likely it was probably multiple elves that went into the formation. Yeah. Um, Did not oh, want to think about that part. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, that bag just keeps getting better. You don't recall any specific Will people wait a lifetime for a moment like this? What is this other book that you speak of? And she sort of closes the um, uh, closes the the book in Dwarvish, um, and she kind of sits up a little bit and sits back, um, sort of in that centered water watery area, um, and with a lot more dexterity than you would expect, actually slips the Dwarvish book into the bag of holding. Um, and then flips open the butter churning milkmaid. <laughs> like, oh, flipping boy. through it sort of page by page. She was very accurate in how she described it. She was. <laughs> You're not wrong. And you can see after a moment, she just stops. <laughs> Bellis is doing his absolute best to keep a completely straight face. Yeah. Where is keeping a straight face? Uh, Elias is trying so hard not to laugh. Bellis has oh. high charisma. I think <laughs> I think he's good, but it's never <laughs> not just not react. Because just mm. Right, right. It's, it's there's nothing. I'm just going. She to... like <laughs> she she turns like one page and she's like reading through it. She kind of good parts. <laughs> well, she Are flipped through a parts? bunch of it. Mm. She stops and she turns her head to sort of like regard you and look at you. <laughs> and then she looks back to the book. <laughs> oh, we just 
gave the dragon a bodice buster. <laughs> and it goes back to you? I have lived for almost 1,000 years. I have seen the ending of the world and the birth of a new one. And in all that time, I have never ex experienced anything like this. Something we both have in common. Well, she sort of like leans down, looks at all of you, like a little bit closer, and like, do you little people create much of this? <laughs> have you heard of great oh, words of our own? <laughs> it is so uh, perhaps more common than it should be. But yes. <clears throat> varying degrees of quality, but. As with all things. It, it, yes. seemed, it seemed like something that perhaps, as you said, you have not had the you opportunity experience to you. experience. She sort of nods her head and slides into the bag of holding with the other book. <laughs> and thus ends the saga of the third time I've made <laughs> fucking sessions. <laughs> Oh my god. We gave it to a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, this is probably the worst use of an insight check ever, but does she seem to like it? <laughs> actually, yeah. I I actually. Make an insight check. Oh, yeah. yeah. I need to know. I, like, I need to oh, know. Oh, oh no, you guys. Hey, I know, I'm like, I want to roll too, but that's 14. 15, no, 20. 20. <laughs> 20 for insight on the dragon liking the spot. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> Go into the whispers channel because it's whispers. Channel. <laughs> carefully by the way about how weary i should describe the smut yeah, yeah. she wanted it to be 100 percent accurate but also you know positive <laughs> about this document you know the dragon's just putting in the name of like her her high school's crush as opposed to the alarm <laughs> the dragon creates the first fanfic <laughs> i want you to bring me more <laughs> <laughs> Just starts like, <laughs> writing fanfic. <laughs> <laughs> he eventually age. becomes a world renowned smut writer. Oh, oh god, she finds it later in a writer. different yeah. life. And like, what there the we fuck? go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It seems like a rather unsatisfying finish, don't yeah. you think? Really? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm have pretty heard satisfied. Thing many times. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey. uh, well, hey, I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, he set himself what? up for that, fucker. Right. Ah, uh, where were we? Oh, oh, right. Yeah. Cardio was threatening Sadev's life. Yeah. And then... Because, uh, oh, what was it? Nolan was chuckling over it. Um, yeah, what was the last thing you heard? <laughs> uh, last thing I heard was... Um, I think Sadok saying, fuck it, let's do it. And saying, hey, um, see ya, Prim. Uh, and then I yeah. talked but after that. She reacted poorly. Yep. She did react poorly. She threatened you with her staff. Um, and then lowered it and started muttering. Just because my name was Primrose before. Fucking Nolan. And Christina basically said, Perhaps 
This is not the time to say that Remus also said to say hello, but we will not use the exact words. Just glance at the <laughs> ground. Thank you, Christona. Look, if it helps, I'm pretty sure Nolan didn't mean to be rude. I think he just has a crush on you. <laughs> <laughs> she turns bright red at that. How does Nolan react? <laughs> Nolan kind of stutters for a second. What? What the fuck, kid? You, you, you can't just blurt things out like that when you have no idea if they're true or not. That's what liars do. That's my job. Um, this time internally, not out loud like my usual conversations with them. Please. I grew up with, like, 20 other kids. I know how this stuff works. <laughs> <laughs> nice. See that as it may, kid. We're not children. Eh, We're... You act like it. Ooh! <laughs> oh, snap! Ooh. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's not wrong! <laughs> <laughs> My vengeance for this shall be prolonged, child. <laughs> I look forward to it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Prim blushes a little bit more and uh, looks at Sudoku. Please don't say things like that around him. He might get the wrong idea. Fucking <laughs> stupid Nolan. <sighs> I was almost expecting stupid sexy Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <sighs> Get him out of here. Get all of you out of here. <sighs> Go... Do whatever you feel like you have to do. And get, slight these, nod. and get the traitorous assholes out of here with you. So I was just going to walk the long way around and then just start kind of like pushing Bauer and Sudoku from behind back towards the ship. Yep. Uh, as we're leaving, shout out. And bye, Prim! That one's from me! <laughs> <laughs> he might get, like, a slight punch in the back from Christona pushing him. Hey, Sanok. Yeah? She points her staff towards you and mutters, and, oh no, she doesn't mutter this. She shouts a few words in Druidic. Um, and a storm made of fire appears around you. Yeah. <laughs> Make a motherfucking deck save. Oh. Yeah, that will not do it. Nope. Take 47 points of fire damage. No. I will take you 23, take though. You take the, uh, you take the worst, you avoid the worst of it, um, but you still take, you are still burned some. Eh, worth. She shouts after you, Get off my island before I eat you and shit you out to feed my children. Jonah's just gonna hang her head. 
and push a little bit harder. <laughs> Innate, the closest probably you've ever seen to Cristona being like, don't embarrass me in front of the primordial. <laughs> <laughs> You're embarrassing me in front of my boss, please. <laughs> right? The closest you're going to get from the mushroom person. <laughs> Nolan started it. Part of me wishes they'd heard the uh, mention of you're acting like a child. <laughs> Probably did. I said it was. He was saying that internally. Oh yeah, that's true. That did go to Nolan. Mm. Yep. Never mind then. Yeah. Like um, heavy sigh, lower head, probably. Sudoku gets like a dusting of spores on his back from the puff that comes off of the hat. <laughs> Just push them back towards the ship. <laughs> you can at least keep pushing him until, uh, For a mile or two, but it's a couple hours walk back to the uh, ship. Yep. <laughs> it gets dark. That's fine. All right. So it is getting dark. It's been about a full day. Do you guys want to stay on the island for the evening? Do you want to keep moving to get out? Do I still hear screaming? No. A little bit after you guys leave, the uh, screaming from over the mountain stops. And you haven't been hearing the screaming in your head since you stepped on the island. I feel like we should still leave in case Prim decides to follow through on that threat. <laughs> he gets such a look. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I trust Ramus on his own, so I'd prefer to get back on the ship. We agree. Though probably as soon as they get back to the boat, Christina will stay on the island like a little bit longer than everyone else and just kind of take it in for a few more moments before jumping back up towards getting back on the boat. <sighs> All right, you do so. The island seems almost sad to see you leave. It does not care for the rest of your friends, though. <laughs> yeah. For Sudoku in particular. Yeah, I was not surprised in the least. <sighs> well, that went well. We have a given definition no words. of well. <laughs> Me, I'm so Nobody died. That seems well enough. But it's yeah. we found one of the closest to a consensus among us than that we have ever had. And looking back towards, like, Sadok, considering other gods, potentially. 
Yeah, if we decide to do that, we should uh probably go back to the church headquarters. Get somebody else to pass the message along. We could probably do it with Nolan's help, but A, that's gone mildly poorly the past couple of times that we've used him, and uh, B, I, I don't know how happy he is with me right now. We wonder why. <laughs> no is idea. Is learning sarcasm? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, yep. <laughs> I was just trying to help him out. Gosh. It's like he's never even had a little brother. We agree that passing a message more safely is the correct course, if that is if, the goal. If that's our goal, yeah. Well, you also, she also mentioned uh, going and visiting the Tritons to learn more about Gamir. Mm -hmm. Or going to the bottom of the earth, but I don't think we really want to go there yet. We talked, uh, it was the Triton that was at that one cave before, right? Back on... Back uh, in Enron? Yeah. Yes. Hmm. I'm checking my notes. In the Sapphire Shelter. Right. We have spoken to a Triton before. But... They were very focused on all the monsters of in the south of the Nutangi Ocean. Monsters and curses. Very dismissive. True, but that was the one. If we go to them, it might be different. That is true. But that's two directions to go. Although the first direction we want to go is out of here. Yes. Is which, sorry? Out of here. Out of here. Yeah. What crazy happens as we try to get the hell out of here? Excellent question. <laughs> uh, you're just heading straight out? Um, at least keeping... Within the bounds of not going where Primordial said not to go, so. Fair enough. Alright. So, I'm gonna kind of assume you're heading for the uh, eastern exit, because that's the, or the eastern entrance, because that's the one you came in through. Mm hmm. Alright. So. I would like you all to please roll me a d100 and a d20 for things that happen while you are on the way out.
<laughs> oh, Sadok. You rule. Oh boy. Sadok, roll me a D9. I forget what that means. Level spell. <laughs> ah, third level. Ah, right. Yep. Yep. Oh boy. Wild magic. Wild magic, motherfucker. Um. <laughs> A laugh and then right. silence. Okay. I needed to check something. Um, so, Doke. Yep. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw for me, please. As a gateway to the dark between the stars open. Opens. And a 20 foot radius sphere of blackness and bitter cold appears, centered on you. You are fully blinded as this occurs. No, oh, that'll uh that'll work. Take uh four cold damage. And I need you to make another dexterity saving throw. Damn son. Yeah. This is one of the things I'm good at. Yeah. You are that kind of priest. Take yeah. uh, one acid damage as you attempt to move out of this area as milky otherworldly tentacles rub against you and make it more difficult for you to leave. Gross. Difficult terrain. You've been caught in the hunger of Hadar spell. Yep. Gross. Been there. Yeah. Indeed. Um, but that's what you get. What else we got? Ah, ah. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh. Help. We're just going to roll with these because I think that they'll be the last thing I have time to do tonight. Okay. Um, so, as you guys are passing through the forest, you notice that some of the trees are beginning to um, that some of the trees are rotting and dying in the area ahead of you. As you enter um, as you head deeper in I need you all to make constitution saves for me please. Well. Nice knowing y'all. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Two of you rolled that you entered a death zone. Oof. Great. <laughs> All right. So Bauer, you save. Uh, so take half. Everybody else take thirty-three necrotic damage as you enter the death zone. And you start to feel the uh, life in your body be slowly ripped away from you. I'm uh, I'm not doing great. <laughs> <laughs> you have 13 health left. Oh, well. Hold on. 
Yeah, <laughs> there's some mass cure wounds that might go out. Yeah, I'm gonna do mass cure wounds. There we go. Alright. So, some healing goes out. The water eventually stops moving as you, as you, uh, well, so you get this shock as uh, it starts um, ripping the life from you. What do? It, it's still surrounding them? Um, it's basically a giant circular zone that you've just entered into. Try to book it. <laughs> or do we want to, is there a way to go around it? Probably. I mean, if it's circular, it's got to be finite, so I would say back out yeah. and try and go around. All right. You back out. Takes you an extra several hours, so you are sailing on into the night um, to get around this. But you do eventually find your way out of the forest and out into the open again. As you sail on out. Hooray. And leave the center. Ramus comes up on deck. Well, that was horrible. Please don't make us do that again. Kind of looks around to all of you, hoping that one of you will agree. Sorry, I yawned in the middle of that. <laughs> we'll try to avoid it. Oh, but then Nolan won't be able to get to see Prim again. Sigh. <laughs> Sigh. <laughs> that awkward moment <laughs> when you understand the betrayer. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry, I didn't actually hear what Sadok said. I just kind of went sigh out of reflex. That's fair. What did <laughs> you say? But if we don't come back, no one won't be able to see Prim again. <laughs> <laughs> yep, sigh. You have a little mental image in your head of uh, Nolan flipping you off, as you say. Hey. Hey. He's tormented me this whole time. It's only fair that I get to return the favor. Torment is a strong word. True. Well, I feel like he's helped yeah. you more than he's like been a dick to you. And True. hey, depending on how this turns out, I might be helping him. He's your <laughs> sassy friend. At this point, which one is the sassy friend? <laughs> I think it's just an escalating war of sass at this point. <laughs> there I mean, will be more than just sass next time. At least you're not a demon anymore. <laughs> well. Nolan gives an evil laugh. It's apparent he's not very good at them. Like, even this little thing looks like it's kind of flipping us off as we leave. <laughs> I guess? A little bit. I promise it was not intended to look like it was somebody flipping you off. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. 
makes perfect sense. So, where are we heading now? What? Let's go back to the fish rod and see how long we were here. Oh. So we're not going directly into some fresh new horror. Yes! That is not the plan at all. Yes. It never is. Shush. <laughs> Don't tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know it never is. But, you know, at least when you go home, you can be reasonably sure there won't be some fresh new horror waiting for you, right? One fresh new horror later, <laughs> wipe. <laughs> yeah. I live I mean, where you live. There wouldn't have been <laughs> until you said that. You know, maybe we should plan to to head straight for the next new horror because, I mean, if things never turn out the way we want them to, then if we head for danger, maybe everything will turn out well. <laughs> Did you hear my obvious fake laugh? <laughs> was that Ramus? No yeah, was it Ramus? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All of the above. Nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, fish rod sounds nice. If you plan for danger, you're not going to get no danger when you show up. You're going to get worse danger when you show up. All right, everybody, don't plan. <laughs> Done. Empty your minds. Empty your minds. It's worked pretty <laughs> Don't well think of anything. So far. Don't choose the form of the destructor. <laughs> uh. Alrighty. Well, you guys have made it out of the center. It's hellish wild magic. Um. Ray. We are heading back to the Visharad. Ramus punches some uh, buttons, takes the airship into the air, and starts actually showing Diggeroy how to fly it now that you're not in a growth zone. Yay! Huzzah! So Diggeroy begins to learn how to actually fly an air. Just in case, you know, Ramus should ever die horribly or something. Ooh. Just in case. Just in case. All right. And I think that's where we're going to end for tonight, my dudes. Huzzah. All right. That was uh, a lot of talking. Um... You keep going to find these people and just talking to them. Um, We're learning. You are. I'm so proud of you. I, I'm getting oh. to a point where I even have like plans. Wow. Right? How to fix this? Insane. <laughs> we just talked about not having plans. I know. I had to throw them all out, but I'm just saying. I almost had plans. <laughs> Okay. Well, as long as you don't anymore. <laughs> wow. uh, yeah. You might start noticing a theme at some point or another. Everybody who tried to fix this in some way has had things go horribly wrong over the intervening, like, thousand and change years. Yeah. Um, so, well, well, not horribly wrong. Just not as well as they'd hoped. Yeah. This time will be different. Maybe. Will it? I don't know. That's up to you guys. We don't have anyone named Steve in our race. It's okay. <laughs> you haven't taken in any mysterious, clearly sketchy assholes from the Underdark this time. With dark, mysterious past. 
Um, no, no, just, just a please. Ghost sketchy in our ones head from and a, yes. Uh, super sketchy thief who <laughs> is everybody keeps telling us is like the worst thing we could have done. <laughs> yeah, no. The, the only person we got from the Underdark is one of the, the least sketchy people in the party, actually. <laughs> mm. Accurate, actually. Yeah. Like, least I sketchy mean, by far, I think. The voice in your the voice in your head is fine. It's fine. You know, I'm sure there's nothing bad that can come out of um that can come out of Rama of you guys releasing Ramus either. No. Well, I mean, we got an airship out of it. You did. You got a very nice airship out of it. Um, that he's even being nice and teaching one of you how to fly. There you go. I'm certain that there's nothing bad that can happen with Ramus, though. No, of course not. No, of course not. Nothing at all. I mean, um, our goal is I to keep consider... Realm alive and keep her focused on f- keeping him uh, in check. I still consider Bauer the <laughs> most sketchy member of our party, including <laughs> Ramus. Hmm? He is the worst. Well, <laughs> it's true. I'm also still half convinced that he's like some sort of mind flayer clone abomination thing. Wow. Doppelganger. That's what it was. Nobody knows. If he's a doppelganger, then why are there all these clones of him everywhere? He's, he's actually a team of very uncreative doppelgangers. Right. <laughs> he, he's actually the anima of that, the one of the six that died. Or the seven that died. <laughs> That's it. No, there there is only six of them. Oh, six. Of them. Um, one of them died. Huh. That's actually not a bad theory, but it is incorrect. <laughs> she. Well, for one, the one who died is a she. Hey, hey, hey! Uh, it could happen. <laughs> no um, way judging. Bauer. For two, Bauer has none of the murderous hatred that characterized her later years. That we know Whoa. of. That we know let, of. Let me, I mean, me she, tell... he killed someone and then brought them back so we could kill them again better. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me regale you with a brief story <laughs> um, about these two that I'll probably never have the time to tell in-game, but that I find to be kind of funny and hilariously petty. <laughs> um, so, the six people... Um, kind of founded a lot of the major nations, right? Y'all have heard a bunch about the Primarch, a.k.a. Skjol, a.k.a. the leader of Hel- and founder of Helgi Domer. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've looked through the timeline a bunch, you'll see several references to a place called Carpathia, which is on the same continent as, the, as uh, Helgi Domer, He's but on Vigo. the southern end of it. Skjol established Helgi Domer, um, and the uh, one who died was a paladin named, I think, Talarn was her name, um, saw that he was making his own nation, and they had this rivalry going on. They were always trying to one-up each other. So she went, saw his nation, thought, well, fuck, I can do that better, and made her own fucking nation and spent a couple hundred years fighting wars with him over who was the better one. Until she died. (laughs) And then their two nations spent another thousand years fighting wars with each other over how one of their leaders killed the other. They are now two of the biggest countries in the world, and they started because... They started having wars between each other because one of their leaders had a petty bitch grudge against the other. And then the Prince of yeah. Dreams cursed her to become Bauer over and over again because he was the most petty. <laughs> <laughs> Seems legit. <laughs> I mean, it checks out. <laughs> I make no promises. <laughs> I 
At this point, he's just choosing the best one. Oh no! There is, <laughs> there is a, there is a hard plan for what Bauer for what the deal with Bauer already is. Mm-hmm. I know what the deal is. I'm the only one who knows what the deal is, actually. I haven't even <laughs> told Bauer what it is. <laughs> well, I mean, what fun would that be? Exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> Funny how things work out when uh, you just ask the DM, hey, Give us a bunch of MacGuffins at the beginning of the. It's true. Very funny how that works out. All right, guys. Yup. Yup. Definitely never leads to anything weird or interesting or foreshadowing. Never at all. Never. Um. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> story time is over. Um, Who had nomination? Yes, that. That's a thing. Have you guys been updating the... We the have, fun- except for last week, apparently. It was me last week, I believe. Uh. I have to go with Sadok for the drinking, the pram, and something else. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good stuff. Cool. Good night, everybody. I will see you all next week. Night. 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 I have three people. I guess we can go raid into someone else playing D and D. So let's go Wizard Rex TV, shall we? Because they are playing D and D. Thanks for watching. Good, and good night, night, everybody. Later. I'm a badass asexual polyhedral dice hunter. I'm proud to be. I'm a flying ace and fly through outer space. Hello, sweetie. I'm a badass asexual polyhedral dice hunter. I'm proud to be. In whatever sitch like singing on Twitch or playing D and D. I'm a badass asexual polyhedral dice hunter. You may call me obsessive, but I just border on being a collector and being a dragon that sits atop my treasure. That's so shiny. I'm a badass asexual polyhedral dice hoarder. And my partners love me for it. I'm a natural 20 when.